Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Uh, my name is Michael Kupfer. I'm with Harvard Business Services, and uh, we're going to get started here in just a minute. Um, one thing that we like to do when we start our webinars, and especially for this one today that uh, is going to feature uh, attendees from around the globe, we, we'd love to know uh, exactly where you're from. So um, if you don't mind, just take a second to open up the chat box and type in the, the country or the, the city that you're located in, just so we can get an idea of who's on the line with us today. Uh, today's webinar is a Delaware Companies for Non-Residents, and uh, we are going to present a lot of information for you today. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lot to pack into one hour, so we're going to do the best we can, and we're going to try to answer all of your questions as we go. Um, we are recording today's session. So uh, if you do miss anything or if you have to sign off early, uh, you will have a chance to revisit it later on. Um, and we will provide you a PDF copy of the slides as well. Um, we encourage you to ask your questions as they come up, um, as you think of them. Uh, Mike, who's going to be uh, presenting to you in just a moment, uh, will do his best to answer your questions as they come in. And anything that we can't get to right away, uh, we will address at the end of the session in the Q&A. Um, in, in total, we expect to go about 60 minutes today. And uh, just before I turn things over to Mike, I'm going to give you a quick background on who we are. So Harvard Business Services was founded in 1981 in Wilmington, Delaware by Rick Bell, who is pictured on the left in the photo right there. Uh, this is a family-owned and operated company. Uh, Rick's son, Mike, was named the president of this company just this January, so he is a uh, the, our new president and our president for the foreseeable future. Uh, we're now located in Lewis, Delaware, which is right down on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. We've formed over 150,000 companies and we have over 75,000 current clients around the world. Uh, we are registered agents for Delaware and formation specialists. We are very, very customer focused. We offer free lifetime support and low prices and uh, we have a great staff here who spends their entire day answering questions uh, from people just like you around the world who are wondering how to start a Delaware company and, and various questions around that. Um, I do want to point out that we are not attorneys and we're not accountants, so please don't take anything in today's presentation as legal advice or as uh, accounting advice. We do encourage you to speak to professionals in those fields um, if you have specific questions about uh, any of this material. And lastly, we are not affiliated with Harvard University, even though we share the Harvard name. So um, there's just no connection there. All right. Well, with that being said, I am going to turn this over to Mike, and he's going to get started on the presentation. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. We have many people from around the world with us today, so thank you for joining us. We have people from Texas and New Zealand, South Africa, Netherlands, Russia, India, Italy, and Canada. That's uh, a great group of people, and uh, we look forward to presenting this information to you. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, we also have somebody from Poland, so that's great. Um, so uh, a lot of people want to know about why companies choose Delaware. Uh, so the biggest reason why clients choose Delaware is not because of tax advantages. Um, it is because the Delaware Court of Chancery uh, is the oldest court in the nation and has over the years developed a body of laws and fine-tuned them to produce a Delaware with the strongest corporate law structure. Uh, if there is a lawsuit presented against your company and you're incorporated in Delaware, you go before judges and the judges make the decision instead of going before a jury. So it expedites the process um, as well. But that's the number one reason why clients from not only around the U.S., um, but also from around the world choose to incorporate their uh, company here in Delaware. And um, because of these uh, favorable law structure, over 60% of your Fortune 500 companies are incorporated here in Delaware. Uh, when you file a company here in Delaware, um, none of the owner information is available for public record. Uh, so that's another nice advantage that Delaware has. So all the information as far as owners and shareholders and directors and officers in the company is all held within uh, either the operating agreement for the LLC or the corporation bylaws uh, for a corporation. 
operation. And neither required to be disclosed to the state of Delaware, nor to Harvard Business Services. Um, low startup costs among, uh, among the lowest in the world. So uh, it's really inexpensive to form a company here in Delaware. Uh, they do make it more expensive when you have to make amendments or changes or closing your company, um, things of that nature. But to start a company here in Delaware, it's very inexpensive. Uh, it's also very simple to start a company here in Delaware. Um, a lot of people ask us on a daily basis, do I need to provide any documentation or passport information or a copy of my driver's license? Uh, the answer to that question is no. Uh, anyone anywhere in the world can form a Delaware company, uh, but it does exclude certain countries that are restricted by the U.S. Treasury Department. Um, and we can, we'll go into that in a little bit uh, in here. Uh, and then as far as uh, tax advantages, there may be tax advantages, um, but uh, that's more of a question for an accountant uh, who can help answer those questions for you. Uh, but I can tell you that if you are not physically operating here in the state of Delaware, uh, there is no state income tax here in the state of Delaware when you're conducting out of the state business. Uh, and it's easier to raise capital. Investors love uh I love investing in Delaware companies, um, and it, it uh, you know, because it's more favorable to them, um, and it's a lot, you know, very easy for them to decide uh, to invest in your company if you are a Delaware company. Okay, so uh, we talked a little bit about this in the previous uh, slide, but uh, the question here is who can form a Delaware company? Anyone in the world can form a Delaware company, um, except for those located um, in specific restricted countries such as North Korea, Iran, Syria, and Cuba. Um, those are currently the countries that are on the U.S. Department of Treasury's restricted list. Um, you do not have to be a U.S. citizen, and you do not have to live in the U.S., and you don't have to have an address um, in the United States to form a company here in Delaware. Uh, you also do not have to visit uh, the state of Delaware. Um, I would say that almost uh, 95 to 97 percent of the time uh, that we form a company, we're not interacting face to face with that person. We're mostly doing it uh, over the web or online. So um, it's it's it's. Uh, you know, very easy for you to form a company here without even having to visit the state of Delaware. So, uh, next part that we're going to go into is, well, if you don't live in the state of Delaware um, and you don't, uh, you live somewhere else, what do you what do you need in order to form a company in the state of Delaware? Uh, and you don't have a U.S. address. Well, all that is required to form a company in uh, here in Delaware is to appoint and maintain a Delaware registered agent that has a Delaware address. Uh, so Harvard Business Services is located here in the state of Delaware. This is where our physical office location is. This is where all of our employees are located. Uh, we don't have any other offices around the world. Um, and uh, we charge $50 a year to act as your annual registered agent here in the state of Delaware. Uh, you can see there are other registered agents that do charge very, uh, various fees for them to act as your registered agent. So you can see we have a very minimal fee and a very low uh, fee of $50. That fee has remained at $50 since 1981 um, since the company was opened. So uh, it's uh, we have a very competitive market with a lot of different people that do it, but we have a very competitive uh, advantage with our pricing. Uh, so I do see there are a couple questions that came in. Um, you're an Amazon seller. Will I pay tax to other states if I sell over all over the U.S.? Um, Alexander, that's a great question. Uh, you typically are going to pay the tax in the state in which you are physically located in. Um, you generally are not going to pay taxes for each state that you that you send uh, that you uh, that you send to uh, or that you send packages to. Um, but for more information for that, you will need to speak to a tax professional. Um, and what 
does physically operating in Delaware mean? It means you have a physical office location uh, here in the state of Delaware. So you physically are working out of the building and within a, uh, a location inside the state of Delaware. Um, and Jose, we don't have this in Spanish. Um, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish fluently. Um, so uh, we'll, we do have representatives that speak in Spanish and you can certainly call our office and they'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, so a lot of people ask us the question, well, if I'm forming my company in Delaware, doesn't that mean that Harvard Business Services is my uh, physical office location? And the answer to that question is no. Uh, Harvard Business Services is not your physical office location. We are simply your Delaware registered agent. Uh, as a registered agent, uh, we form or excuse me, we forward along uh, any um, uh, any lawsuits that may be served against the company, and we notify you of the annual franchise tax here in Delaware. But we are not providing a physical office location for our clients. Uh, if you desi desire a U.S. address for mailing purposes only as a form of contact, uh, we do offer several mail forwarding services. Um, it's where all your offices, or excuse me, all your mail is sent to our office. Um, we then sort and filter out any junk mail, and then we scan your mail to you. Uh, we do have a link here at the bottom of the page that will take you to all of our services that we offer for that. Um, in order to take advantage of our mail forwarding services, uh, you do have to be a client of ours. All right, and uh, I'll try to get to some other questions. Um, here, um, what about bank? Um, should be opened in Delaware. Okay, I am going to get to your question about opening a bank account a little bit later in this presentation. So I will certainly answer your question um, uh, in in a little bit. Um, so another question that we get uh, often every day is, can a non-U.S. resident get a tax ID, also known as an EIN? an employer identification number? And the answer to that question is yes, um, a non-U.S. resident can get a federal tax ID number. You're not required to have a U.S. address or U.S. social security number to obtain the federal tax ID number. Um, EINs are issued by the Internal Revenue Service uh, for both foreign and domestic citizens. Uh, so we are at the mercy of the IRS when we're obtaining this number on your behalf. Um, it can be ordered at the same time as forming your company. It's an additional service that we offer. Um, and uh, as I said before, you're not required to have a social security number or an individual taxpayer uh, identification number in order to obtain an EIN. And EIN orders for non-residents uh, that have no U.S. social security and no U.S. address, uh, the process takes between seven, and 20, 7 to 20 business days. And the reason for that is because that cannot be completed online. We have to fax that into the IRS. Uh, so the IRS does take a bit longer um, to process uh, that uh, application. Uh, Harvard Business Services charges $95 to obtain the federal tax ID number if you do not have a U.S. address and U.S. Social Security number. All right, and the next question is that we normally see a lot of is, can a non-U.S. resident be a shareholder, officer, or a director of Delaware Company? Uh, the, question, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, there is no citizenship requirements for being an officer, director, shareholder, or a member or manager of a Delaware corporation or LLC. Uh, the only time that a non-U.S. resident cannot be a shareholder or an officer or a director is if you have a corporation um, that is filed, uh, that has filed for a, uh, for S corporation tax status uh, with the U.S. Um, so it's merely just a tax status that you are filing with the IRS. So that would be the only uh, reason you wouldn't be able to be a shareholder is if you, the company has filed for S, uh, subchapter S. Uh, tax status. Okay, 
so now we're going to go into your question, Adrian, about uh, the bank account. Uh, so the bank account can be open anywhere in the world with any bank of your choice uh, when you open a Delaware company. It does not have to be open here in Delaware, um, and it does not have to be, uh, it, you know, it does not have to be open uh, in where you're physically operating. It can be open anywhere in the world. In order to open a U.S. bank account, you will need to appear in person uh, with with the bank. Um, you will need a copy of the certificate of formation or incorporation, uh, which we uh, prepare and file on your behalf when you uh, request us to take care of the filing of your company. Uh, they will also require a federal tax ID number. However, do keep in mind that every bank and banker is different as far as what they require to open the bank account. So we do uh, suggest that you contact the bank, uh, let them know what you are planning on doing, and they will tell you exactly what you need to open that bank account. Um, sometimes they may require a copy of your bylaws. They may require a copy of your um, uh, LLC operating agreement. They may require a certificate of good standing. Uh, it just varies bank to bank, but uh, they will tell you exactly what you need, and you just need to let us know, and we will get you exactly what you need to open that bank account. Uh, a lot of people ask us all the time, does Harvard Business Services, is Harvard Business Services able to assist with opening the bank account? And uh, the question, answer, to answer that question, we are not able to assist in opening uh, a bank account for you, neither here in the U.S. or anywhere in the world. Um, and that is... Uh, uh, because we have strict uh, regulations now that are in place in the in the United States, and they're going to require you to be in person. Uh, well, a lot of people, so the next question would be, well, I'm not located in the U.S. I can't travel to the U.S., so how do I have, how do I open a U.S. bank account if I need to, if I need to do that? Uh, so the, the uh, way to do that is, um, if you are unable to travel to the U.S. yourself, uh, you may consider finding a U.S. Uh, US business partner, a friend or family to own part of the business who may live in the United States. Because anyone anywhere in the world can be uh, an owner and a uh, officer, shareholder, and director in the company. So if you can't get to the U.S., you can also uh, use a family or friend who might live here in the U.S. to assist you with that process. Um, but I would be very cautious if you do find a company that says they can open a U.S. bank account without you appearing in person uh, because of the regulations that are here in the United States, uh, you are required to appear in person. So uh, just be very cautious of that. Um, but if you can't get to the U.S., another way to look at it is either contacting a family member or a friend that you know that might live in the United States and they can possibly help you out with um, that. Uh, so going on um, to our next topic, um, this document uh, is usually uh, used for people um, that are outside the United States, doing business outside the United States and not physically uh, locate doing business in the United States, they're doing business in their home country. Uh, it's called an apostille document. It comes with our international formation package, uh, which is our um, uh, standard package. Um, the apostille convention was drafted by a Hague conference on private international law and signed into effect in 1961. It dictates how documents may be officially certified among its members, uh, member nations. Uh, if you live in one of the 116 countries governed by the Apostille Convention, you will be required Apostille for service for your formation documents. Um, this uh, list, full list, can be found right on our website uh, with more detailed information. Um, not every country requires an Apostille document, but like I said, there are 116 countries that would require it. Uh, so you'll want to read this page to find out if you're the country you're located in would require this document, uh, but we do provide it in our international standard package. 
All right. And so the next question that we usually get is, what is required to keep my company compliant, uh, company compliant in the state of Delaware if you're not physically operating here? So um, as the owner of a Delaware company, it is important that you understand the state of Delaware's annual corporate compliance requirements. Uh, if you are not physically operating business in the state of Delaware, there are two major aspects of compliance you will be required to maintain uh, when having a Delaware company. You'll have to pay an annual Delaware franchise tax, and you'll have to pay an annual Delaware registered agency. Uh, the Delaware franchise tax uh, has no uh, bearing on company activity or income in the company. It's simply uh, for the right or privilege to own a Delaware company. And since you don't have a physical address here in the state of Delaware, the state of Delaware requires that you have a registered agent uh, to act on your behalf and be the liaison between you and the state. Um, and I'll go into more information on the next slides uh, with regards to this. So for Delaware franchise tax, as I said, it's an annual fee that you pay here in the state of Delaware. Every company is required to pay this, uh, being a Delaware company, uh, it does not have any bearing on company activity or income in the company. Uh, it's just a simple flat rate um, that you pay to the state of Delaware to maintain the life of your company. So for an LLC, uh, it, it is due every year on June 1. Uh, it's $300 a year. Um, and as I said, it's a, a, it's a simple flat rate uh, that you pay to the state of Delaware for the $300. Corporations are a little more um, complex. Um, it's based upon the number of authorized shares that are in the company, so how many shares of stock uh, you have in the company. So if you have zero to 5,000 shares of stock in your company, uh, your franchise tax is of 175. Uh, plus, you are required to uh, provide the state of Delaware with an annual report, which is $50. Uh, which brings your total to $225. Uh, if you have more than 5,001 uh, shares of stock in your company, um, it, it, there's two ways that this tax is calculated. Um, it is uh, calculated either by the authorized shares method or the authorized capital method. Um, shares capital method, uh, We our last webinar that we did was specifically on Delaware Corporation Franchise Tax, um, and that is available for you to view um, and give you more information about being a maximum stock company. So I suggest you go and, and look uh, up that webinar and uh, take a look at it. Uh, it's filled with a lot of great information. Um, you can also get more information uh, about Delaware Franchise Tax um, on our franchise tax calculator. Uh, so I'll take a little time to answer some more questions that have uh, come in um, from people. Uh, one question we had was, if our, your business is online and we have a Delaware corporation and we decide to start working with a payment service provider and they ask for a physical address in the U.S., does it make sense to provide the registered agent's address or better to give director's address? Let's say he is in New York, but it is not a fiscal office. Um, uh, okay, well, this is a bit of a tricky question, but you're generally going to give them the physical office, office address where you are physically located um, because we are not, Harvard Business Services is not your physical office location. Um, if you have, uh, if you can provide more detailed information, we can certainly help answer that question in more detail. Um, you can also send um, an email to uh, info at DelawareInc.com and we can help answer your question um, more thoroughly um, uh, it, via email as well. Um, we had a question from, is it recommended to use Delaware LLC company for real estate business owning and renting the, the property? Um, yes, we do see a lot of people who use a Delaware LLC uh, for real estate. Uh, typically, the LLC is used for holding assets such as real estate. Um, it's typically used for small businesses or partnerships um, or joint ventures. So. Uh, we often do see a lot of clients use the LLC for real estate 
uh, and owning and renting a property. Uh, if I register a company in Delaware and open a bank account in the state of California, do I need any additional steps for this? Uh, great question. Um, yes, if you form a company here in the state of Delaware and you are physically operating in another state's jurisdiction, um, often the next step in the process is to file for certificate of authority uh, or form qualification in the state in which you're physically doing business in. Uh, this will help you to comply with any local and state complaint, uh, compliance matters as each state is generally going to want a piece of the pie. So you are governed by the Delaware laws, but you're operating in another state's jurisdiction. So by filing for certificate of authority, it gives you the off the authority to do business as a Delaware company uh, in the state of California. Um, and we can certainly provide you more information on that. Uh, there's a lot of information about form qualification on our website um, and our uh, customer service uh, representatives would be happy to help answer any uh, questions you have with regards to that in more detail. Um, Okay, so uh, we had, and I think this is an in addition to more precise to own properties worldwide, not in the U.S. and rent unit. Um, and again, no matter where you're located, whether you own or holding assets or renting properties, clients do often uh, look at Delaware LLCs um, to put their assets in. So. Uh, no matter where you're located in the world or where you're renting or owning property, uh, you can certainly look into having an LLC uh, be the owner of that property. And we often work with many clients uh, to help assist them with that. Uh, okay, so with regards to the franchise tax, uh, about the $300, this fee is not paid to the IRS and it's not paid to Harvard Business Services. This uh, $300 franchise tax is paid to the state of Delaware. Uh, they are the ones that you, because you are incorporated in the state of Delaware, you're paying them an annual fee to maintain the life of your company here. So that $300 goes to the state of Delaware. Um, okay, so uh, I'll try to get to all of your questions. I know there's a lot of questions with regards to for non-U.S. residents forming a company um, here in Delaware. I do want to make sure that I get through all the slides. Um, but uh, here's a question about being cautious um, about opening a bank account and um, you having more questions. Uh, you are approached by a current U.S. citizen that needs help opening a corporation for a non-U.S. resident and opening a bank account on behalf of a non-U.S. resident. The U.S. citizen will serve as a shareholder. Should the U.S. citizen be cautious for the non uh, U, or the U.S. non-resident? Um, this is a great question. This question is a little bit out of the realm of my expertise. Um, I can't you know, go into full detail uh, as far as, uh, you know, it, you know, who you work with and who you deal with. Um, so I can't really get into the nuts and bolts of that question. And I do apologize, but it's a little bit out of the realm of my expertise. Um, so can a virtual office qualify as operating business address? Uh, no, the virtual office is just a form of contact address. It's not where you're physically operating your business. Um, so I'm going to go into some more slides. I'll get to the questions um, as they come. Uh, and uh, we'll get to all the questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, we have about uh, 12 more slides to go. So keep asking your questions. You guys are asking great questions, and I'll be happy to answer all of them. Um, another question that we get is with regards to the Delaware franchise tax is if I uh, for my company here in 2019, when is the annual franchise tax due? Uh, your annual franchise tax for the state of Delaware would not be due until 2020. So uh, if you form the company here in, the, uh, in 2019, you don't have to pay that franchise tax uh, to the state of Delaware until uh, 2020. 
All right. So the next question is, that we get a lot is, what is a registered agent and why do you need one? Um, I answered this question a little bit earlier, um, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in this slide. Uh, a registered agent is the liaison between your company and the state in which it is incorporated. The state of Delaware requires you to have a registered agent at all times uh, because you do not have a physical address here in the state of Delaware. Uh, so they require you to have a registered agent uh, to act on your behalf and to receive uh, any lawsuits and forward the annual franchise tax uh, notices to you in a timely manner. Um, and as I said before, we charge $50 a year to act as your registered agent. The first year registered agent service is included in all of our formation packages. Um, and then every year thereafter, it's $50 a year. Um, and again, it has not raised since 1981. Um, so that's the uh, exactly what a registered agent is and why you need uh, one uh, to form a company here in Delaware. Other than the Dan Delaware annual fees, well, uh, another question that we get, well, you have to pay income taxes in the U.S. Um, Delaware corporations will typically be required to pay tax on all U.S. source income as well as any foreign earnings. Uh, Delaware LLCs uh, typically do not pay federal income tax if they have no U.S. source income. Uh, that typically goes for uh, Delaware corporations too, but uh, you, you're going to want to speak to a tax professional uh, to get more detailed information on that. Uh, so typically, if you are not physically operating in Delaware, the annual franchise tax is the only tax you will pay to the state of Delaware. Uh, for official regulations, uh, you will want to you would want to consult the IRS publication, uh, U.S. Tax Guide for Aliens. Uh, business taxation is very complicated, and there are a number of variants. Uh, as we said at, at the beginning, we are not tax professionals, um, and urge you to consult a tax professional before forming a company in the United States if you have questions uh, about taxes that are outside of the uh, franchise tax here in Delaware. Uh, I'm not going to go into full detail about this slide, uh, but this is things that could be considered income and things uh, how source of income is determined. Um, there's a lot of different variables here uh, as far as what is uh, what is referred to as U.S. source income and what is not considered U.S. source income. Uh, so you will want to speak to an accountant or tax professional who can answer those questions for you in more detail. Um, and again, we are recording this, so uh, you guys will have access to the slides um, shortly after the presentation, and uh, we can also send you a link, uh, and you can find the video on our YouTube channel. All right, so we've talked a little bit about, you know, uh, you know, being a non-U.S. resident and opening a bank account and getting a federal tax ID number and what it is you have to do to uh, maintain a Delaware company. Um, and so now I want to kind of talk about, you know, uh, forming the company and what you need to do to 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 choosing a company name. Uh, so. When you choose a name for your company, uh, you want to you want to do something that's easy to remember and represents what your business does. Uh, no matter what type of company you file, uh, it must comply with the Delaware law and include a proper ending. Uh, a proper ending for LLCs is LLC, L period, L period, C period, or limited liability company. Now, a lot of people ask, well, do I have to have this LLC or uh, in my company logo and things of that nature? It's not required to go in your uh, logo, but often clients do include it because it does it, it does show more credibility uh, that you are in an incorporated business. Um, for corporations, you have uh, many options, uh, including INC period, CORP period, foundation, association, and many more um, that you can find on our on our website. Um, obviously, the most popular for a corporation is INC period, uh, but there are other options that you can uh, you can use. Uh, there are
There are certain terms that are prohibited in a company name, uh, such as bank or university. Um, if you wanted to use bank or university in the name, you would have to receive prior approval uh, from the state of Delaware uh, to, in order to uh, use that in your company name. So uh, just keep in mind when you're thinking of your company name, if you want bank or university in there, uh, you do have to get proper approval in order uh, to use those words in your company name. Um, if you have a company name in mind and you want us to uh, check the availability for you, for you here in Delaware, uh, we can do that quick, very quick and easy. Um, you can do that via our website or you can live chat with us or you can email it to us or you can give us a call and we can check for you in a matter of seconds to make sure that it is available here in the state of Delaware. Once we know that the company name is available, we're all set and ready to go because that's the hardest question that we're going to ask you when forming a company. So a little bit earlier, uh, someone was asking about, um, you know, the LLC and being the right type of entity uh, for rental properties and holding assets and things of that nature. So this slide goes into a little bit more about uh, what an LLC is used for, what a corporation is used for, um, and the many different types of corporations that are available um, and the many different types of entities that are available to form and file. Uh, I will say that the LLC is by far the most popular type of entity um, because of its unmatched flexibility and convenience that it has over a corporation. Um, there's a lot less corporate formalities um, and there's no stock involved in an LLC. So those corporate formalities uh, such as having to elect shareholders and directors and officers and issuing shares of stock um, and holding uh, annual meetings and minutes can all be eliminated within an LLC. So the LLC is typically used for small businesses, partnerships, joint ventures, or holding assets uh, such as boats, airplanes, and um, houses or rental properties um, that you have. Um, in 2017, 73% of all the companies uh, that were filed with the state of Delaware were LLCs. So uh, the LLC is a very, very popular type of entity, um, and we do see a lot of people form uh, LLCs. Um, uh, but then there's also the corporation. Uh, so the corporation is typically used for companies that are looking to go public. You're looking to bring investors. You're looking to transact business globally. Uh, so, the, with the corporation, you have three tiers of power. You have your shareholders who own the company, the directors who run the company, and the officers who handle the day-to-day -day matters. And a lot of times we do get a question, well, I'm the only person in my company. Can I hold all company positions uh, and be the sole owner of the company? And the answer to that question is yes. Well, there is only one person that's required uh, to form a company here in Delaware, and you can be all the, uh, you can be the shareholder, the director, and the officer in the company and run the company um, on your own. Uh, so then with a C corporation, we get a lot of people who ask us about S corporation. S corporation is merely a tax status for a C corporation. Uh, there's some benefits to do uh, doing that. Um, obviously, if you're a, a non-U.S. citizen, you can't file for S corporation tax status. Uh, but if you are a U.S. citizen, you can file for S corporation tax status. Um, and it's merely a, a way to to it, it it limits you to the number of shareholders and allows you to write off early losses. Um, so there are some advantages to being an S corporation, but you're definitely going to want to speak with your accountant um, on what tax status best suits you, uh, your company. Another type of corporation here in Delaware that we see a lot of is a non-stock corporation. Um, a non-stock corporation is typically used for foundations or homeowners associations um, or people who are uh, raising uh, a nonprofit organization that's looking to raise money uh, for a certain, uh, you know, uh, that's looking for donations and things of that nature. So you file as a non-stock corporation, you provide your mission statement to you, 
Uh, we then, uh, you then have to file the proper forms with the IRS to become 501c uh, status. Um, there's a number of different 501c statuses. Um, the most uh, pop, uh, the most, uh, the, the one that we see the most is 501c3. Um, and we make sure that that mission statement and proper language is in your certificate of incorporation so that you can go um, to your accountant or go to the IRS and properly fill out that next form uh, to become nonprofit status. We do not help assist with the nonprofit status, but we can form the company for you here in the state of Delaware. A newer type of entity that a lot of people are finding out more about is called a public benefit corporation. Uh, it's a new type of entity that is typically used for a company looking to benefit a good cause. Um, and uh, there's a lot more information on our website about this. Uh, the LLC is also coming out with a public benefit company, um, and it's available now. Uh, it was available as of August 2018. Uh, so if you wanted to file an LLC as a public benefit, you can certainly do that. Uh, there are also other company options, um, and, uh, and these entities are not as well known or they're used but my, more by attorneys um, is the series LLC and the limited partnership. Uh, so all of the information with regards to choosing the right business entity and finding out more information about uh, LLCs and corporations uh, can all be found right on our website. Um, and we do a great job of writing a lot of blogs about these specific topics um, and helping you to educate you um, to uh, form the company that best suits your company needs. Um, so if you have any additional questions, uh, like I said, you can email us, you can live chat us, you can call us, and we'll be happy to help you answer uh, those additional questions for you. So if you are a corporation and you're looking to raise capital for uh, a, a business type, most serious investors will only invest in a Delaware general corporation. Um, and they typically insist that you be a Delaware uh, corporation. A great example of this is Facebook. I'm sure all of you out there have a Facebook page. So uh, Facebook um, was originally a Massachusetts uh, corporation, um, and when Mark Zuckerberg decided to go public uh, with the company and uh, and all of that, the attorney came to him and said, well, you're going to need to file this as a Delaware company um, and uh, if you want investors to come in. So um, they became a Delaware company, um, and that's because the laws are more favorable in the state of Delaware for getting investors to invest in your company. Um, and uh, so that's why over 66% of your Fortune 500 companies are incorporated here in the state of Delaware. Uh, so the next slide uh, goes into us talking about how to form a Delaware company because a lot of you out there want to know, okay, uh, how do I form a Delaware company? It sounds really interesting about uh, being able to form a company in Delaware, take advantage of the strong corporate law structures, and operate your business all over the world and anywhere in the world that you would like. So all that we need in order to file your company here in the, Del in the state of Delaware uh, is this information right here. Um, so the hardest question we're going to ask you is what you want to call a company. And the sky is the limit as far as what you want to call your company. Um, as long as the name is available um, in the state of Delaware, we're all set and ready to go. Uh, and then we're just going to take some basic contact information after that. Um, the, uh, we are required to have a person with whom we can speak with at all times uh, with regards to the company. Uh, and that is just in case there's a lawsuit presented against the company or we need to get in contact with you about your annual franchise tax um, and things of that nature. So you, the street address, that the information that you're providing to us is for our records and our records only, and it can be anywhere in the world because it's just our way of being able to get in contact with you and where we should send your annual uh notices to. So that's the only reason we're asking for a street address is where, and so we can send your annual franchise tax and annual registered agent notices to you. Um, we then require the initial 
members or directors of the company of who we are releasing uh, the company to until successors are elected internally. Um, as I said earlier, uh, the information, uh, we don't need to know who who is who in the company or who owns what in the company. Uh, that's typically kept within your LLC operating agreement or your bylaws of the company. Um, but we do need to know at least one person's name of who we are releasing the company to until you actually do elect successors internally within either the LLC operating agreement or the bylaws of the company. If you are filing a corporation, uh, we do also need to know the shares of stock, the authorized shares of stock and the par value. Uh, generally, when uh, first starting out, clients will often start with 1,500 sh uh, shares of stock at a penny par value or a zero par value. Uh, the par value simply means uh, that you can't sell the shares of stock for less than the par value. You can sell the shares of stock for whatever the market may bear. You just can't sell it less for the less than the par value. Uh, the par value does not show what the company is worth or uh, how much the shares of stock are worth. It's just simply a ballpark figure uh, for you to sell the shares of stock. And you can't sell it for less than that shares, uh, than less than that par value. Uh, after that, we just take uh, your billing information of, uh, from your form of payment method um, and uh, then we're all set and ready to go. So the entire process, whether we do it by, over the phone or whether we do it um, via email or whether we do it, uh, you do it over our website, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete the process. Um, once we have payment, once we know that the name is available, uh, we take care of it from there. Um, Nice thing about our company is we're directly electronically linked with the division of corporations. Uh, so we form your company the same day that you initiate the service. Um, and then you will receive your approved documents in two to three business days. Um, there is also an expedited service to receive it the same day, but you do need to put those, if you need expedited service, you need it faster, you do need to put it in uh, by a certain time for us to get it to you the same day, uh, but we can we we can take care of it for you no matter whether it's expedited service or uh, just um, our typical turnaround time. So we have over eighty thousand clients that we serve as the registered agent, and we've helped over one hundred and fifty thousand people from all over the world form uh, Delaware companies. So we have everything down to a science. Uh, and we take care of everything, so it's all hands off for you. Uh, so once you have that paper, the legal paperwork, you guys can go out there and do what you do best. Um, so very simple and easy process to form the company. So the next question that we get all the time uh, is, well, what's the price to form a Delaware company? So um, these prices here are simply for people that are located outside of the U.S. Um, and Canada. Uh, so the U.S. and, and Canada uh, would typically, uh, our, our domestic uh, pricing is a little bit different, um, and the packages uh, don't include apostille and things of that nature. So if you are located outside of the U.S. Uh, and Canada, uh, these are the packages that you would choose from. Um, we call them the international formation packages because we're sending things um, over uh, the oceans and, and things of that nature. So the most bare bones package that we offer is our green package. Uh, what this means is everything is sent by email. There's no hard copy. Um, and well, a lot of you are going to ask, well, what about, you know, I need a physical copy. Well, since we work through an imaging system with the state of Delaware, um, the state of Delaware does all their documents in black and white. So the email copy is just as good as the hard copy. So you can print off as many copies of that certificate of formation, and it is the uh, the um, the the ba basically the birth certificate for the company. Um, there is an, uh, another uh, document if you need us to provide it called a certified copy. Uh, we can certainly get that for you, but the certificate of formation that we provide. Uh, is the actual certificate for the company. 
Uh, and uh, along with the green package, uh, you so you get we pay the Delaware State filing fee. We include your first year registered agency. We email all the documents to you. Um, you can then uh, sign up for our client portal uh, where you can manage your company very easily and make annual payments um, and get notices with regards to SOP and things of that nature. Um, and then, um, so uh, that's the green package. The basic package is one step up from that, uh, and that uh, uh, does include us mailing physical documents to you. Um, and then our standard package uh, is our most popular package, um, and that includes a deluxe three-ring binder uh, that has all the corporate documents in it that you need to maintain the life of your company. Uh, so uh, that's our international packages. Uh, you can find all this information on our website. All right, so I'm going to turn it back over to Mike uh, now uh, to tell you a little bit about, more about why you choose Harvard Business Services, uh, and then we're going to answer your questions. We are running uh, quick on time, so we're going to try and run through the last slides quickly, and then I'm going to try and get to all of your questions as best as I can. Yeah, thanks. And uh, like Mike said, there's a ton of questions in here. This is really, really good stuff, so we're going to do our best on these. And I just do want to point out that um, we, we would very much value your, your business if you are interested in forming a Delaware company. Uh, we've been doing this for, uh, well, since 1981. Um, we offer free lifetime customer support. And as Mike pointed out, we have same-day filing service. Um, but one of the things I really want to call your attention to is uh, the graphics that you see here uh, from Better Business Bureau and from Trustpilot. These are two sites where our clients are leaving us reviews pretty frequently. and um, you know, it's not just that we're getting great reviews, but if you pull up some of the other companies in this industry uh, that you might be familiar with, their their reviews typically are not quite as good. There's um, a little more confusion, and uh, we just really do our best to make sure we're answering all of your questions and, and making sure you understand what you're getting, uh, with, you know, every step of the way. And these are the various ways that you can contact us if you need to. Uh, phone, email, there's a live chat uh, on our website that you can use, and you can also reach us by Skype. Uh, we're here 9 to 5 uh, Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, we answer very, very quickly. Um, if you happen to, to message us when we're not available, we will get to you right away as soon as we're back in the office. So um, please feel free to reach out with any questions you might have, and, and we'll take care of you. And lastly, I just want to encourage you, if you're interested in receiving some information from us uh, regularly, we send out a weekly uh, blog update. Um, if you want, you can sign up on our website. You can see how to do that right there. It's all educational uh, and news content that we send. We don't spam you. Um, we don't send you a ton of emails, and we don't give your email address away to anyone else. So um, it's, it's totally up to you if you want to get that information from us, but, but we encourage you to do so if, if that's something you're interested in. All right, so with that being said, let's jump into these questions and uh, let's see. Um, Mike, let's, let's start with a couple that were um, a little bit earlier that were just one some clarification on what specific things meant. Um, can you clarify what physically operating in Delaware means? Yeah, so physically operating in Delaware means you have an office location here um, or you have employees located in the state or you have a bank account located here in the state of Delaware. That's what uh, physically operating in the state of Delaware would be. Okay. And uh, we kind of touched on this on an earlier slide, but what? how would you define U.S. income? Or, or how does a company know if they have U.S. sourced income? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, U.S. sourced income, is it varies in many different ways. It's a lot of different attributes, um, and I would want you to speak to a tax professional for more information on that. Okay. Um, one question that we got was, given uh, given that a company is not operating in Delaware uh, and, and doesn't need a business license, would that company need a business license in the country they are operating in? Uh, yes, you're generally going to um, that's what the apostille document is for. Um, so you generally take the apostille to your consulate, uh, 
uh, uh, um, a consulate uh, in your country, um, to in your home country, to get authorization to do business there, um, and they will help you to um, let you know of anything else that you need to do um, in order to properly conduct business in your country. Uh, we're, we're not familiar with how other countries work, but if there are certain things that you need, um, we can certainly help uh, get that information together. Okay. There's a there's a couple questions here about about privacy and anonymity. So um, just to combine those, what 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 documents would um, would contain somebody's information about uh, ownership in a Delaware company, and is it uh, also kept private in bank details. Uh, okay, so uh, you know the inform. I can't answer the question as far as bank accounts. Um, the banks are going to require certain information, but uh, I would would say to you that the banks are certainly going to keep any information that you provide with uh, to them uh, confidential and private. Uh, so when you farm a company here in Delaware, the information none of your information is available for public record. Uh, an LLC never has to file an annual report here in the state of Delaware. Um, so the owner information for an LLC always remains uh, confidential, and it's the owner information for an LLC is kept within an LLC operating agreement. Uh, we do provide a template for you, um, and you can uh, it can it doesn't have to be in uh, English. It can be in your home country's language. Um, it's not required to be disclosed to the state of Delaware or the Harvard Business Services. Um, and in the LLC operating agreement is where you would show who is who in the company, who owns what in the company, and how the company is run on a daily basis. Uh, for a corporation, it's known as bylaws. Um, and it's the same thing there. That's what shows uh, who is who in the company, who owns what in the company, and how the company is run on a daily basis. Um, the corporation does is required to file an annual report every year with the state of Delaware. That annual report does become available for public record. So for a corporation, there is certain information that will become available for public record. Um, the annual report is a simple uh, doc, uh, a simple thing that you fill out. It just shows the uh, company's physical office address, uh, who the directors are, and lists at least one officer in the company. Um, and then one person is required to sign uh, the annual report. So when you are filing your annual franchise tax, uh, if you are using our services, um, we all the annual report information is being asked for you as you're filling it out. Um, and then once we you take payment, we take that information and we file it with the state of Delaware. Okay. Um, Mike, one, one person said that they they wanted to open a bank account in the United States, and the bank told them that they had to have a physical address mm -hmm. in the U.S. to do that. Is that something that is uh, common for all banks, or is that specific to a, maybe a specific type of bank? Uh, it may be specific to a certain type of bank. Um, we, uh, you know, we're happy to help they clarify anything for the banks um, if they if they do give you trouble about um, opening a U.S. bank account. Um, again, you can take advantage of our uh, mail forwarding service. Um, uh, if you if you do need a form of contact address, uh, so uh, that's one of the ways to look at it. But um, if if the bank does have any questions, we can certainly help clarify it. Okay. <clears throat> um, following up on an earlier question, uh, Alexander wanted to know. Um, it sounds like. He would pay only three hundred dollars and then fifty dollars for a registered agent per year. Um, what about income from Amazon sales? How is that reported? Or who is that reported to? I suppose um, that's it depends on if it's U.S. income or things of that nature. But that's uh, a question that's definitely out of the realm of my expertise, and it would be better suited to ask a tax professional or an accountant um, of how that would be reported um, and uh, how it would be taxed. Okay. And, uh, and Alexander also wants to know um, how to get a physical address in Delaware if you wanted to. Um, it seems that perhaps uh, some 
some companies in his home country may or may not work with him depending on where that address is. Uh, I don't know how to help them get a physical address in the state of Delaware. So that, that's not a service that, that we can provide. Okay. Um, so uh, one person wants to know what a series LLC is that we mentioned briefly. What's the difference between an LLC and a series LLC? Uh, okay, so a series LLC uh, is a little more complicated of an entity. Um, it, it, it has one additional um, article in it um, that says it is a series LLC. So a series LLC uh, is basically like a chain. Uh, so you have a parent company. And then you have a number of different other companies that fall under that parent company. Um, and these may be DBAs or they may be, you know, uh, other companies. Um, the series LLC is not well recognized by a lot of attorneys, by a lot of states, by the IRS, things of that nature. Um, it's a little more complex of, a, of an entity type. Um, but it's, it's, it's basically you have a parent company and then you have different series underneath of them. Um, and we explain more information about it on our website. Um, but it is a very, it, it is a little more complex. Um, and it's not uh, used by too many, uh, too many people. Um, but if you want to form the series LLC, we can certainly walk you through that process. Okay. We've got a, a, a Several questions here from Adrian. Um, let's let's look at some of these. Um, do you have any idea if my Delaware company can act as an import company in the U.S.? Mm, uh, as far as like importing and exporting, um, you're going to want to talk. Uh, you know, you're definitely going to want to talk to um, the United States. Um, uh, import and export uh, professionals. Um, I don't have enough information that I can provide um, you the answer to that question, and I do apologize. Okay. Um, and just a, a quick update here. We're, we're a couple of minutes after 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, we still have a number of questions to get to, so um, we'll, go through. We'll, we'll, we'll stick around a little longer and, and answer as many as we can here. So if you are able to stick with us, that's great. And if you can't, um, you will have the recording available. Um, so, sticking with Adrian's questions, uh, I hear something about blockchain to validate a Delaware company. What do you know about it? Uh, so, the blockchain is uh, something that is up and coming. Um, it is uh, relatively uh, new, This uh, and there, a lot of people are, are looking at it. Um, the blockchain goes with the cap table and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, it's 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 a little more it, it, there, it's a, a kind of a complex uh, thing to explain in just a short period of words. So if you want to email us at info at delawareans.com uh, or email me directly, Michael at delawareans.com, I can answer that question for you in more detail. I just there's not enough time here for me to go into full detail about that. Okay, and. So, can a company in Singapore act as an LLC owner in Delaware? Is there any reason that a Singapore company can? Anyone, any, uh, well, act a, so it's a it's a company in Singapore that is an LLC and they want to act as an owner for a Delaware LLC. I, as as what I'm understanding. So yes, if you wanted to have another company as the owner of a Delaware company, it is possible. Okay. And can I change the address or company name once the company was established? Yes, you can change the company name and you can, uh, the address that is for our records uh, can be updated at any time. Uh, the, the state of Delaware doesn't know where the office, the physical office address of the business is um, and doesn't need to know that information and neither does Harvard Business Services. So that physical office address can be updated anytime. Uh, you just need to notify us that, that you've updated your address so that we can properly get your annual billings to you. Um, and yes, you can change the name of your entity at any point in time, uh, but it, it is more expensive to change the name of your entity than it is to form and file a brand new company. But uh, if you need
need to keep the history of the company and you just want to change the name, we certainly provide that service to assist you. Okay. And uh, are we able to, uh, to suggest a company that makes it easier to open a bank account for non-USA residents, or is that not something we are able to do? No, we don't have any recommendations um, as far as uh, who to work with with making it easier to open a bank account. As I said, um, it's a, the easiest thing is to uh, talk to a family member or a friend who might be located in the U.S. Um, who can help assist you with opening that bank account um, because the banks are very, uh, uh, they do require you to appear in person in order to open a U.S. bank account. So uh, I don't have any recommendations, um, but my uh, for who to, what bank to talk to, but uh, if you need to open a U.S. bank account um, and you can't appear in person, um, a friend or a family member is the best direction to go in. Okay, and sticking with the uh, the bank account theme, um, someone mentioned that opening a bank account uh, for Europeans is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, accounts for banks, uh, offering bank accounts for offshore tend to refuse our Delaware LLC saying that we cannot open an account because we provide advisory and other services. Do you know which services are refused by banks? I do not. So, yeah, and that might be something that differs from bank to bank as yeah, well. Yeah, it does differ from bank to bank. Like I said earlier, every bank and banker is different as far as what they require to open the bank uh, account for the company. You're going to want to speak to them directly to find out what they need. Um, and then if there are any additional documents that they need, uh, such as a certificate of incumbency, a certificate of good standing, a certified copy of a certificate of incorporation or LLC, um, or um, something of that nature, we can certainly provide those documents um, to you uh, at a, at a, as an additional cost. Okay. Um, Serdan has a question, and uh, he asked earlier the question about using an LLC for real estate, and um, there is a, a blog post available on our website about using uh, LLCs for real estate, but he, he's asking now, what's better for real estate, an LLC or a corporation? Um, okay, well, I can't say you should do this and you should do that. Um, like I said, the LLC is typically used for uh, small businesses, partnerships, holding assets. Uh, the corporation is typically used for uh, companies that are looking to go public, looking to transact business globally. Uh, there's stock involved in a corporation, whereas an LLC, there's no stock involved in a company. Um, so often, you know, the LLC is the most popular type of entity, um, but, you know, whatever business you do choose, we are certainly happy to assist you. But I would definitely recommend you going on our website and reading our blogs and uh, the information that we have um, about uh, being a, you know, a property owner and rental, um, a rental person. Okay. We got a, a couple questions here uh, asking basically the same thing. If, if I'm selling a physical product to the United States from abroad, am I going to pay income taxes? Uh, so if you're not physically operating in the United States, you generally, and you have no U.S. source of income, you will generally not pay income tax in the United States. But if you are... Uh, doing business within the United States and taking uh, payments within the United States or things of that nature, you may be subject to U.S. source income. Uh, so, again, there's many different variables with that, so I would want you to speak to a tax professional um, or an accountant. Okay. Um, if, if anyone else has questions related to that, um, I, there's not a whole lot more information that we can provide, but you're welcome to email us and, and ask the specifics that you might have, and if we can help you, we will certainly do that. Um, okay, we have a few more to get to, and then we can wrap it up. If if a company is registered by a non-U.S. resident and it doesn't do any business in the U.S. and doesn't want to open a U.S. bank account, does it have to obtain a U.S. tax ID number? Uh, 
you are only required to obtain a federal tax ID number if you are physically doing business here in the U.S., opening a U.S. bank account, um, or have uh, or have a physical office location here in the United States. So, um, if you are doing any of those things, then you would be required to get a federal tax ID number. But if you're just a U.S. company, but you're doing business not in the United States at all, you typically don't need a federal tax ID number. Okay. Uh, Mehdi is asking, what does it take to close a Delaware company? Uh, so it is very easy to, uh, to close a company here in Delaware. Um, you can uh, it's either call a certificate of cancellation or a certificate of dissolution. Uh, and uh, it would require you paying the filing fee for the certificate of uh, cancellation or dissolution. Um, and then you would have to pay um, any past due or current um, franchise tax to formally close the company here in Delaware. If you need uh, a quote for that, you can email payments at DelawareInc.com, um, and they'll be happy to provide you the, quote, the exact amount, uh, what it would cost to close your company in Delaware. And two final questions to wrap things up here. <clears throat> uh, do Delawares govern the operation even if there's no physical location in Delaware? And do they uh, govern disputes should they arise? Uh, no, Delaware does not govern uh, the business activities um, or where you are doing business. Um, this information is not filed with the state of Delaware, um, and it's not filed with Harvard Business Services. Um, so you can operate your business where you would like, as you would like, um, and it's not required to be disclosed to the state of Delaware nor to Harvard Business Services. And finally, uh, can I add a member to my solo LLC? So if it's a one-person LLC, can they add additional members and would they need to notify us? Uh, yes, so you can add as many members as you, you can have as many meta, uh, uh, owners and shareholders and directors and officers in your corporation or your LLC. Uh, it is not required to be disclosed to the state of Delaware or Harvard Business Services because we don't know the uh, owner's information. Um, generally, you would only do that uh, within, uh, within your LLC operating agreement for uh, the LLC uh, and the LLC operating agreement is typically kept on file at all times within the company and helps, helps to show who is who in the company and how the company is run on a daily basis. All right. Well, that will do it for us. And thank you all so much for these amazing questions. We got a ton, a ton of great questions, which, you know, really tells us that we're doing a, the right thing by presenting this information for you on the webinar. So um, thanks for joining us and taking some time out of your day. We're going to be sending out the recording and the slides for today's webinar in an email that you will receive tomorrow. Um, if you don't get this by around this time tomorrow, um, please let us know and we'll make sure that we, we get you a copy. Um, you're welcome to contact us with any other questions that you have that we didn't get to. And besides that, we just want to thank you again and hope you enjoy the rest of your day.